Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to show you how to use GeoGebra to find a p-value. If you already know what your null and alternative hypothesis are, I'm going to go to GeoGebra.org, click on Classic. I don't want to recover anything. I want to go to Probability. And then up here, I don't have this pulled over, I want to click on Statistics. And I want to do the test of a proportion in this case, but you could do a mean or any of these other things that you see, but I want to do a z-test of a proportion. So it's going to ask you what's your null hypothesis. And let's say that for this particular problem that I have, I have a null hypothesis. Let's say we want to test the probability or the proportion that um, test the claim that uh, that a proportion of people um, who owns cats is greater than, um, let's say, 62%. So I'm going to have my um, null hypothesis be that. And then my alternative hypothesis here would be that we are thinking that the probability, we think it's greater than 62%. So when I do 62% up here, I really want to rewrite that as 0.62 when I'm talking about that. So my null hypothesis, P equals 0.62. And then I want to say, test the probability or find out um, if that's true or not. So I'm going to have to get rid of that, close this down to get rid of that to answer this. So I would have a null hypothesis as 0.62. Uh, my alternative hypothesis, we thought it was greater than that. Um, and then we want to know um, for our particular sample, um, how many people, what, what's the number of successes? And maybe they tell you, maybe they'll straight out say something like, you know, we had uh, 400 people and uh, 270 actually own cats. So we would know that our n is 400 and our success is actually people that own cats uh, or is, I should call that success, is, is 270. That would be what we would put in here. But maybe they'll say um, we had 400 people and we found that 57% um, of them owned cats. Well, in that case, you need to take 57% times 400 to get this number for successes. So if I take 400 times 0.57, then I get 20, um, 400 times 0.57, I get 228. So my, if I, if I told you a percentage, you'd have to multiply that to get that. So that would be 228. All right, so 228 is going to go, whoa, I can't write the 8. 228 is going to go as our successes, 400 is our n, unless they gave us that specifically, and we wouldn't have to do this little math bit. But I'm going to have to do it, so I'm going to say 228 and 400. So my successes were 228 and my n out of 400 people. And now you can see down here that they give you, um, there's a number of successes and the number of trials or people. Here's our z-score, that's our test statistic, and here's our p-value, 0.9803. So 0.9803 would be our p-value if we were asked for that. Negative uh, 2.0602 would be that. Now what do we do with it, that p-value? Well, we usually are given some significance level in our problem. So we want to compare our p-value against our significance level. So let's say that we were given a 0 0.05 significance level. We want to find out, is our p-value greater than or less than? And you can see that 0.98, I won't write it all, but 0 0.9, you know I have trouble with the 8s there. 0.98 um, is definitely greater than 0 0.05. When we have a p-value, that's greater than the significance level, we say that the, if, the, if the P is high, the null will fly. And that means we're going to fail to reject. If the P is low, like if it was 0 0.02 or something less than our significance level, then we would say that if it's, the P is low, the null must go. In other words, we're going to reject it. 
since our p-value is greater than here, we would fail to reject this. All right, have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you next time.